Canada and the United States Bazaar border. Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Aussie Tash. This video was suggested to me by one of my subscribers. Really interested to see what makes it so bizarre. I really have no idea. Very intriguing. Before we get into this video, please make sure to jump on, hit that subscribe button. That would really help me out. Okay, Canada and the United States Bazaar border. Let's jump in. Canada and the United States share the longest, straightest, possibly boringest border in the world, but look closer and there's plenty of bizarreness to be found. While these sister nations get along fairly well, they both want to make it really clear whose side of the continent is whose, and they've done this by carving a 20 foot wide space along the border. All five and a half thousand miles of it. With the exception of the rare New England town that predates national borders or the odd airport that needed expanding, this space is the no-touching zone between the countries and they're super serious about keeping it clear. It matters not if the no-touching zone runs through hundreds of miles of virtually what? uninhabited Alaskan Yukon wilderness, those border trees will not stand. Which might- Okay, hold on. <laughs> I've just watched the most emotional clip video documentary I've ever seen and that was Gander 9-11 the yellow ribbon operation from Newfoundland and the compassion that the Canadians shown the Americans yet they still have this strict no-go border territory thing going on why what's going on leave a comment I'd love to know might make you think this must be the longest, straightest, deforested place in the world, but it isn't. Deforested, yes, but straight, not at all. Sure, it looks straight on a map, and the treaties establishing the lines say it's straight, but in the real world, the official border is 900 lines that zigzag from the horizontal <laughs> by as much as several hundred feet. How did this happen? Well, imagine you're back in North America in the 1800s. The 49th parallel, one of those horizontal lines you see on the globe, has just been set as the national boundary, and it's your job to make it real. You are handed a compass and a ball of string and told to carefully mark off the next two thirds of a continent. Don't mind that uncharted wilderness in your way, just keep the line straight. Yeah, good luck with that. The men who surveyed the land did the best they could and built over 900 monuments. They're in about as straight a line as you could expect a pre-GPS civilization to make, but it's not the kind of spherical planar intersection that would bring a mathematician joy. Nonetheless, these monuments define the border and the no-touching zone plays connect the dots with them. Oh, and while there are about 900 markers along this section of the border, there are about 8,000 in total that define the shape of the nations. Despite this massive project, Canada and the United States still have disputed territory. There's a series of islands in the Atlantic that the United States claims are part of Maine, and Canada claims are part of New Brunswick. Canada, assuming the islands are hers, built a lighthouse on one of them, and the United States, assuming the islands are hers, pretends the lighthouse doesn't exist. It's not a huge problem, as the argument is mostly over tourists who want to see puffins and fishermen who want to catch lobsters, but let's hope the disagreement gets resolved before someone finds oil under that lighthouse. What's going on with this land? How come America wants it? How come Canada wants it? There's got to be something fishy going on here for them to be fighting about. This is my side. No, this is mine side. 900 plus monuments all across this border? <laughs> my gosh. Leave a comment. Do you know of any folk stories or real stories as to why this bizarre border was put in place? I'd love to know. Even the non-disputed territory has a few notably weird spots, such as this tick of the border upward into Canada. Zoom in and it gets stranger as the border isn't over solid land, but runs through a lake to cut off a bit of Canada before diving back down to the US. This spot is home to about 100 Americans and is a perfect example of how border irregularities are born. Back in 1783, when the victorious Americans were negotiating with the British who controlled what would one day be Canada, they needed a map, and this map was the best available at the time. While the east coast looks pretty good, the wester it goes, the sparse it gets. Under negotiation was the edge of what would one day be Minnesota and Manitoba, but unfortunately that area was hidden underneath an inset on the map, so the Americans and the British were bordering blind. Seriously. They guessed the border should start from the northwestern part of this lake and go in a horizontal line until it crossed the Mississippi. Somewhere. 
but somewhere turned out to be nowhere as the mighty Mississippi stopped short of that line which left the border vague until 35 years later when a second round of negotiations established the aforementioned 49th parallel. But there was still a problem as the lake mentioned earlier was both higher and less circular than first thought, putting its northwesterly point here, so the existing border had to jump up to meet it and then drop straight down to the 49th, awkwardly cutting off a bit of Canada before heading west to the remainder of the continent. And it turns out you can't just draw a straight-ish line for hundreds of miles without causing a few more problems. One of which was luckily spotted in advance, Vancouver Island, which the 49th would have sliced through but both sides agreed that would be dumb, so the border swoops around the island. Okay, so there was some common ground there. Vancouver Island, that stayed in Canada. It's bizarre, isn't it, to think about why they're fighting over this land. And these treaties that were written, what, hundreds of years ago, they're still in place now. What's going on? Whatever happened to love thy neighbour? Like I said, especially after that Gander 9-11 thing I just watched. Great video. Canada, mate, didn't they serve their neighbour really well back then? America, what they did for you guys on that fateful, horrible, tragic day. My golly, golly gosh. Over next door to Vancouver Island is Point Roberts, which went unnoticed and thus today the border blithely cuts across. It's a nice little town home to over a thousand Americans, but has only a primary school, so its older kids have to cross international borders four times a day to go to school in their own state. In a pleasing symmetry, the East Coast has the exact opposite situation with a Canadian island whose only land route is a bridge from the United States. And these two aren't the only places where each country contains a bit of the other. There are several more, easily spotted in satellite photos by the no touch zone. Regardless of if the land in question is just an uninhabited strip in the middle of a lake in the middle of nowhere, the border between these sister nations must remain clearly marked. In Australia where I live, in this place, in this little town that I live, we live on the Bay Islands. There's primary schools over there, but no high schools, so kids have got to jump on the ferry to come over to the mainland to go to school. Sort of similar to that. We're not fighting over international borders or anything, but this it really is a bizarre story. I love it. International land disputes. Canada and the United States. Bizarre border boundaries. I mean, they're not fighting over it really, are they? Like, they're not going in with warheads and weapons and bulldozers and all that sort of stuff. So, obviously, they've found some sort of ground. But is there secret stuff going on in one side that the other side doesn't want them to know about? That's why it's so no-go, no-touchy-touchy. <laughs> Leave a comment. Is there any conspiracies that you know about? I don't know about them, but I'm just learning. You might. That was the video for today. Bizarre. I loved it. If you did, smash the like button. Leave a comment. And please remember to subscribe. That would really help me out. Cheers from down under. Take care. Bye.